What's up, everybody? This is Ivan Moody and Zoltan Battery of Five Finger Death Punch, and you are watching Linear Rock. Perfect. Now we'll go with the interview. Hi, Ivan, and hi, Zoltan from Five Fingers Death Punch. Welcome yes. to Italy. Welcome to Linear Rock. Thank you for having us. Right. This is actually your first time in Europe. Uh, like that. Not in Europe, but, but in Italy. In itself. Italy, Italy, yes. Italy, okay, so yes. in Europe you've been before? Yes. Like, okay. You're actually a hot band. Everybody likes you. you. You know, from, you know, fans of the classic rock to, you know, modern rock. There's a lot of people that hate us, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, but you're pretty, I mean, hot. And uh, you formed in 2007, and your success came soon let's say, and um, still stand strong after six years. Um, you had an evolution sound-wise and on composition, and you had some lineup changes through the years, uh, but most of all, um, as I was saying before, you're still a hottest, you know, the hottest sensation from America, uh, of the rock scene. What's the secret behind that? Our fans. <laughs> okay. We've got some of the most militant fans on earth. Uh, you know, from day one, they've been they've been absolutely loyal, and uh, the numbers keep growing and growing. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that, uh, you know, we're we, somebody told us once. I don't remember what article it was, but they said that we are a band of the people, and I truly believe that. You know, we uh, we all grew up in different areas, but we all kind of grew up the same. Nobody ever gave us anything. We worked really, really hard to be here, and uh, I think that comes through in our live shows as well as in, on the CDs. And uh, I think our fans have an appreciation for it. I would say that because it's we don't discriminate, we don't break down hard rock, heavy metal into yeah. sub-genres. To us it's heavy metal, this is what we do, this is what we play. We like f uh, everything from Pantera to Slayer to Def Leppard, we don't, you know, we, so anything in between yeah. just goes. So we basically, we kind of fall in that place where we can play melodic heavy metal and, you know, real songs that I think it's connecting to people. We don't stick to one sub low genre that you know that would kind of cut our fan base to much much smaller as you mentioned your fan base is very very strong actually they call themselves the, the knuckleheads knuckle okay <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it sounds like a team name it is <laughs> it's a gang <laughs> okay but they uh, came up with this it's the <laughs> oh they came yeah, okay yeah. so it was not your idea to call them like no? that okay it's uh, how this i mean happened uh, it's just a big group of our fans got together and decided to name themselves and pretty yeah. much put a tag on it and ever since then it stuck. Just right away. And knucklehead, if, if you translate it, it's kind of somebody who's hard-headed, somebody whose opinion is hard to change. Yeah. So that's actually okay. kind of fitting, you know, if, if you take it that way. There's a kind of official fun club called the Knuckleheads or it's... Secret? All over the place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they so it's the, it, that's yeah. official right now. Absolutely. Right. So fourth album, The Wrong Side of Heaven and The Righteous Side of Hell is... Fourth and fifth. And uh, fifth, yes, it's coming out. I was about to say that. Okay. Um, so it's coming out July 23rd, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Volume one. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have separately volume two, end of oh, the year. About yes, so about okay. November. So was this um, the intention from the very beginning to have two different records or actually I mean it was like the perfect tempest and your inspiration quite was out of control during composing songs it's basically that's what happened we went to the studio we, we were coming home from the road of touring on a previous record and it was probably our most successful year so to speak you know we were finally then get to the point where we were headlining arenas you know and, and we had these huge huge shows and and all three records of us went, went gold. So it was kind of like a high. We were coming back from the road and just went into the studio with that attitude, like, yeah, let's let's do this, you know? And as we started to write and write, songs were coming out better and better. And I don't know, I even can probably tell you that <laughs> how he felt about at the time when we already gave him like 20 something songs and, you know. Overwhelming. <laughs> but, you know, but basically that's how that happened. We just had so many songs and, so many good songs. Yes, actually. And that's the thing. It's usually you know you can, we call it trimming the fat, you know, and uh, you throw away the songs that aren't worthy of being on an album, or that you know you keep them for a later date. And uh, we sat back and listened to it in its entirety, and we couldn't find one that we were disappointed with. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of it sparked an infer you know a, a sense of us. We were like, well, 
You know, maybe it's that time for us. Let's put out two albums. Let's see how the reaction of it is. We were originally going to do it at the same time. So we were actually going to call it Wrong Side of Heaven, and then the other one was going to be Righteous Side of Hell. Okay. But we figured that's a lot of information to take in at once. Usually it takes, me personally, it would take me a good two or three months just to actually figure an album out and listen to it in its entirety. So it's, it's, it seemed more logical to separate the two. Never thought you'd hear me say that word, did you? Logical. Mm. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but it just seemed, it, was, it seems more logical just to separate the two albums and uh, give, give them a little bit of space between one another so they can breathe. But they both stand on their own, and I want people to know that uh, you know, they belong together. It's not like we made you know, the same record. You know, they're both absolutely stand on their own two feet, and I'm sincerely proud of all of it. Why not releasing a double album? That would be like... Uh, too much, too much too material I just said it, once. yeah, it's yeah. too much yeah. information yeah. at once. 24 songs, that's a lot of songs, you know, and things would get lost. Things that are important to us, songs that are important may get lost in that much, you know, information. Mm -hmm. And keeping the songs for like a couple of years for the next record, not I'd because rather, you want to capture yes. the moment? Well, yeah, absolutely, exactly. and, yeah. and okay. you know, we believe in ourselves as artists and uh, as a band, so I'd rather come back in the studio in a couple of years and write fresh material. You know, these, th this deserves to be put out now. Is this a sort of concept album in a sense or, or not? Every song is a concept. Mm. I wouldn't say that there's one entire concept for the record. Okay. Uh, I would say that every song tells its own story. So, the, and, you know, you can ask each one of us and the title means something different to each one of us. So, and I hope, uh, you know, the listener gets something out of that as well. You, Ivan, stated that you have a very particular composing method that you want <laughs> silence that's around. That's one way to put it. Okay, is, <laughs> is that, I mean, that's goes, you know, I see so much energy in this band, so it sounds strange that you want to silence around and you want to concentrate like uh, uh, nobody around when you write. Um, is that, I mean, always been like this? Or always. Always. Uh, it's just, uh, when I dig into myself, there's a lot of demons in there, and there's a lot of past issues, and it's it's like I don't want somebody else to be exposed to that monster. Um, I'd lose a lot of friends, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Okay. So it's just easier for me to do the writing by myself and then to implement it with what these guys have later on. Uh, the other thing is I don't play any instruments. So for me to sit in the studio with them and to constantly be in their ear and critiquing something, it would drive them crazy. So we have, a, we have a mutual respect that way to where they let me do mine and I let them do theirs and, and we meet in the center at the end of it. Okay. And um, what about Kevin? Charco, is that Kevin Charco? Oh, Charco. We okay. call him Merlin. Okay, yeah. so he's producing the record this time as well. Yeah. He's like the outsider member of the band. He's like the <laughs> fifth Beatle. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a friend first and foremost, and he's done so good with us in the past. He understands us as individuals. He's almost like our therapist. Yeah. You know, so he he brings a lot to the table, and not to mention he's just a brilliant producer. Okay. I mean, sonically, he's a genius. So. It's but how definitive is his impact to your sound, in your opinion? Oh, uh, absolutely. He makes he makes a huge difference for us. I mean, I've always thought. Um, well, I would say I would say the you know the band obviously had a sound how we sound like, and, and I think Kevin is is the right guy to he makes. He doesn't really change anything, like he lets us be who we are, you know, but definitely pushes, you know, it gets the best, that's a producer job, gets the best possible performance out of you, you know. Um, and, and as Ivan just said, he's also almost like a psychiatrist, <laughs> you know, makes the peace. We, we have heavy personalities in a band and, you know, sometimes you need a deciding factor and that's usually Kevin. So your collaboration is, I mean, since a long time. Do, do, do you ever figure about, you know, working with anybody else producing or? Uh, no, no, not really, no. No, he fits no. too well. Okay. Yeah. He's family the to us. The team is perfect. He's family for us, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So all your previous albums um, reached the gold mark in the U.S., as you already mentioned, and all your singles ended up in the top ten, so it's like... Perfect success, uh, and seems um, actually that you're not hurt by you know the crisis of the market in the music industry because mm -hmm. this is very rare, you know, it happening. It's lasting a lot and uh, uh, it's going strong. Um, trying to analyze this from the outside, what makes Five Finger Death 
punch so strong and infectious in your opinion and are you aware of being so cool <laughs> <laughs> wow I've never asked that before uh, no I'm not aware of it to be honest with you and the reason being is I came from humble beginnings and uh, you know I can't go home you know to my kids or to my friends or my family and act like that mm -hmm. you know I still take my shoes off when I walk in my mom's house so there's no room for that for me and I think that that's probably a lot of the reason that people can relate to us you know, uh, none of us act rock starish. None of us have egos like that. You know, we're very humble human beings in general. So I think it shows through in the music. And you had a lot of support from the radios as well. Absolutely. Which is rare, once again, because, yeah. you know, I know in the States there are a lot of classic rock radios, but, you know, the fact that they are supporting new music, it's great, and mm -hmm. it's not happening so often. So um, do you think that this helped uh, as you know it used to be or um, actually the new media made your success first and the radio was just like another side of the story. Well it's different in Europe and in the UK than it is over in the States. In the States there's not a lot of publications, there's very few as a matter of fact and so to be on the radio is really how you get exposure mm -hmm. and um, you know I, I hate. I, I don't hate saying it at all. Actually, you know, we're really close with a lot of those. You know, with a lot of those directors and a lot of those programmers. And but those relationships have been built through the years. You know what I mean? And uh, I, th I think again, it comes down to the fans calling in and requesting the music. You know, they can request somebody else. You know, but they're on the phones and they're on the internet. You know, we want to hear this and we want to hear that. So it has a lot to do with it. It, it was one initial breakthrough, basically, on uh, 2007, the first record. You know, we were a super heavy band compared to what's on the radio, and um, yeah. we had a song that sort of got a little bit of our airplay, and a lot of people were calling in, and eventually the song went top 10. Yeah. And that was when everybody sort of looked at this band like, wow, okay, these guys are really heavy, and what the hell are they doing in a top 10? So it's kind of pushed radio out of a sudden to play a little bit heavier stuff. And so today, I think because because of we had this success on radio, now you have all that remains and heavy, heavy bands on radio that normally would never even get on radio. And and I think it's uh, it's actually changing radio a little bit. And the game Splatterhouse or the Syria? <laughs> I play it all the time. <laughs> okay, uh, actually, it helped uh, as well. What do you think? I d I don't know. Everything uh, helps. Maybe, you know, yeah, I was about yeah, to say just helps. about everything. I mean, we were on the Avenger, the Avengers uh, soundtrack. You know, we were on Splatterhouse. I love yeah. that game. Uh, you know, every little criminal mind says. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every little bit helps. You know, uh, of course it does, uh, and it's an honor to even be involved with most of it. So. Do you actually watch Criminal Minds? I watched that episode. Okay. <laughs> Just that one. <laughs> okay. And another advantage, you know, of success is that you can have any guest you desire to play in, on your album. That's awesome. As you did this time. On this new record, you have a lot of special guests. Uh, starting with Lift Me Up. Uh, Rob with the Halford. true, you know, icon of metal, the metal god himself, Rob Alford, uh, whose idea was that, who's the Judas Priest in the band that wanted we him. All, we all wanted him. <laughs> yeah. um, the thing of it was, is that I was watching TV one night, uh, and Rob was being interviewed, yeah. and uh, they asked him if he had any favorite bands of new genres and whatnot. And the first band that came out of his mouth was Five Finger Death Punch. Wow. And I just, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, oh my God, I, I, you know. So anyway, uh, down the line, once the song was done, uh, we were sitting back and listening to it. And it had a real Judas Priest vibe to it. Like it okay. moves like that. And uh, we were all kind of brainstorming. We were like, well, what if? You know, let's just throw it out there and see if he reacts to it. So we sent him the track. And not even a week later, he calls us and he's like, I'm flying to Las Vegas. I love it. I'm going to come down and sing it with you. And we're just like... This is so surreal. Like it's just amazing. So you reached him directly, or it was oh, well, management, more complicated. Management. management. It's always okay. it's always more complicated. <laughs> but, but it was it was just a matter that it, it was an honor because he listened to it. and He even told us this for the first time. He sat in his chair and he said he put his headphones on, and uh, he played the track. And he said he was immediately just in it. Like okay. he he was loving it. Uh, so it was just such an honor. He's such a great guy. He's real humble. Uh, you know, we got to go sushi with him and pick his brain, and then he performed with us at Golden Gods in America. So the, the whole experience, you, you work your whole life for that. Great. And then we've got, I mean, you're not even, you know, you got the other ones. You got Max Caballera from yes. Sepultura and Soulfly. You got Jamie Josta from Hatebreed, Maria from In This Moment, yeah. Tech Nine. 
you know so it was it's great and that's just the first CD but I mean how did you choose these guests I mean because you know they are influences for you or because they're friends both. or both. okay both uh, or the both. song actually called that special well we, we would pick the song that way like you know we, we once we, the record was done um, basically the record was done first I haven't already finished all the lyrics even uh, even uh, lift me up was already done and that was a time like okay now both records are done now this is play time this is this is the fun comes you know right. well the whole thing is fun but then that's yeah. like the really the fun like okay let's be. reach out to the, our friends like yeah. max you know max came out on stage with us before last year yes he did yeah. sing with us before jamie is a great friend so all these guys are friends and, and and that's how the whole thing came about like hey let's let's uh let's say this song sounds like this would kind of fit let's say max Let's give it to him. Let's okay. uh, take this one to Jamie. So it was fun. And it's we added to those things to the record and it's And know. everybody said yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I would have said yes to any of them too. That's the okay. cool part. So I mean, like you said, it's it's like a second family though. Um you picked a very particular cover for um from LL Cool J, which is called <laughs> Mama Said Knock You Out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually I, I remember, you know, uh, as a nineties thing. Um, this crossover union between rap, hip hop, and mm -hmm. rock music. But do you think this is, you know, it still win in 2013? And uh, how did you approach that? Um, well, basically, the the idea here was that you know we had five. We've been talking about this song for a while, okay. right? Five finger mm -hmm. that punch and the irony of it's called Mama said knock you out. We thought it's a funny combination, but it's a hip hop song, right? Mm -hmm. So. You know, in a, as you just said, in the 90s, this was a big thing. Everybody was doing it. Back in the 90s, there's no way we would have done that. Because why be a black sheep amongst black sheep? What's, that's, that's, what's the point, right? But today, we knew that this is sacrilege. We knew that everybody going to go, oh, you can't do that. So, you know, if you know us, what, what kind of band this is, in a second, that came up like, wow, today this is not cool. Mm -hmm. Immediately, we're, we're, doing we're doing it, you know? <laughs> so the, the reason, actually, that, you know, but the song had to be good anyway. So first, you know, I told Ivan, like, look, let me work on the riffs and let me, you know, let me you know, do my thing and, and we'll see from there what happens, you know. So I put these heavy riffs on it and, uh, and then Ivan did his part and then it, it looked, you know, it came out good. It came out great. I think it's fantastic. And, and then, then the twist on it was we were like, okay, you know, make it even different or more different. Let's get Tech 9 who a lot of people out here may not know or, or may know, but uh, in the States, he's an underground hero. I mean, the guy is phenomenal, and uh -huh. everybody, you know, knows who he is. So we were just like, and he relates a lot to us. You know, his, his style. He likes of, metal, yeah. and, you know. It's, it's so it just seemed like a no-brainer. Okay. Um, you, Ivan, are showing a particular sense of humor in the lyrics and the leader sarcasm <laughs> sometimes. Um, do you have any extra music influence on that? I mean, the sense of humor. Well, you Any know, I, comedian maybe. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> okay. I can. Yeah, there you go. No, but uh, I've always liked the quick-witted. You know what I mean? I think uh, because being, especially being in the music industry and, and being a vocalist, you're exposing yourself to the world. Yeah. So you already know you're going to get criticized whether you like it or not. Um, so for me, it's just better to poke fun at it and let them know ahead of time that it has no effect on me whatsoever. So you can say what you want to about me, but at the end of the day, as long as I'm happy and I go to and I go to bed and you know, fuck them. <laughs> so. All right. Um, you're here in Europe uh, to play all major European mm -hmm. festivals, uh, Sweden Rock, mm -hmm. uh, Rock and Ring, Rock in Park, Download Festival. Um, which one are you looking? forward to the most all of them uh, is there <laughs> okay all of them. But is there any any band that make you maybe more proud to share the stage Rammstein with? okay kiss all right I mean we've waited our whole life for it. we love Rammstein we're huge yeah. fanatical fans of them and there are three guys in our band who have kiss, kiss tattoos, tattoos on yeah, them. Yeah, right. huge so kiss fans. I mean, must yeah. show to Gene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's funny story, really. I'll make it quick. Uh, we were on a plane going from California to Las Vegas, and yeah. Paul Stanley was on our plane. Okay. And I went up to him, and I was like, "It's an honor to meet you, man. Like, you know, we're playing with you across seas." And he goes, "Oh, that's cool." He goes, "What's your band name?" Uh -huh. And I go, Five Finger Death Punch." And he just went. Cool. All right, so and I was just like, all the good names were taken, but I'm sorry. You know, we just had to go with it. So that was my Paul Stanley uh, moment. Story. Okay. Yeah. 
and um, any anticipation about the Rockstar Energy Drink Mayhem Festival that you're doing with Rob Zombie? It's starting end of June, 29th, yeah. June 29th from San Bernardino, right? Yep. Okay. The great part of it is, is that when we started out, you know, Mayhem was one of those first festivals that we did, and we were on second stage on rotation, so we were going on between 11 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon every day, 120 degree weather out, you know. And then the next year we played, we got on main, st or the next time we played, we got on main stage as the opener. Okay. And so here we are two years later, and now we get to co-headline it with one of our favorite human beings on earth, Rob Zombie. Okay. You know, Rob's just the coolest cat too, man. So I don't know if you saw Golden Gods, but I, I got to perform with him as well. So yes. I got to play with both Robs. <laughs> yes. Pretty rad. <laughs> cool. And uh, next 23rd of November, you'll be in Italy, sharing the stage with Device and Avengers, Avengers Sevenfold. Mm -hmm. um, Feels like it would be a very huge show. Are you bringing the whole production? Because you're opening, right? Is no, device is opening okay, in, in us in an event. Okay. Yeah, but you know, we would like to, but mm -hmm. at this point, we haven't broken ground over here to do so yet. You know, and it is really avenged tour. You know, so what the plan is is after that tour, you know, because we have to go back to the states after that. We're going to do another headlining state. Then at the beginning of next summer, you know, we want to come over here and headline our own. Okay. And that way we can bring the fire and the brimstone and the, the okay. show that everybody wants to see, you know what I mean? So it, it's just, it, it has to take its course, baby steps. But right. uh, I promise you, once we bring it over, you'll hear about it. Okay. Um, your fle flesh and blood approach, uh, the way of the fist, let's say, uh, comes from your music, actually, or it was, you know, your physical attitude, the energy that you put in your performance that came first? I'd say it was definitely the attitude and you know, between all of us. I mean, we're all, you know, unique individuals, so to speak. And for me, I've always been one of those, you know, I don't like being rubbed the wrong way. I, I'm highly opinionated on some things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best way to express that is to put it on music. And when I first you know, hooked up with Jeremy and, and him, it, it was a perfect outlet, you know? Uh, so, yeah. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you're like, sure. Okay. <laughs> um, Far From Home is a very touching song. Yes, it is. Uh, dedicated to the man serving your country and uh, also any country in the world True. because it's universal thing. Mm -hmm. um, some of you have actually militaries in the family or where this come from? We've just, uh, we both have uh, military backgrounds uh, to a degree. So I would say it's more of an, a respect and an honor for that. You know, I mean, they're sacrificing everything to make sure that the rest of us have freedoms mm -hmm. uh, that otherwise we wouldn't. So for us, it was just, you know, that's why we went over to Iraq and Kuwait twice, you know. Uh, it's the least we can do, you know, for all that they're sacrificing. I mean, yeah, I don't even know how to, s that, that's a long, a long page of, of question right there, so. And did the Army actually uh, send you any, like, compliments about the song or? Uh, oh, every day. Okay. We constantly get so they credited heard it for and, uh, it. And yeah, they yeah. It. yeah, most <laughs> definitely. And, you know, when we were over there, it was just such an experience, you know, shaking hands with them and how appreciative they were, you know, and then that, that relays when you come back, to, you know, home and people around the world hear about it. And I, I think more bands should do it. I truly do. Uh, it's the least they can do. We mentioned before the LL Cool J cover, but you did also a Bad Company song. Mm -hmm. Bad Company, actually, yeah. one of the most important for them. Uh, so you have also a classic rock background. I mean, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, my mom, <laughs> my mom, and my dad raised me on Kiss, The Doors, Pink yeah. Floyd. You know, Bad Company, of course, Fleetwood Mac. I mean, you know, I love old school rock and roll. I mean, that's where it stems from. Black Sabbath. You know, Judas Priest, of course. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it just it, when we sat down, it was one of those things when we started playing it. it once it was on tape, we were going, man, that's big. Like, we have to put this out there. And luckily for us, you know. But what happened next? I mean, you were grown on the classic, and then what happened? It's Paul Rogers. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's especially being a vocalist, man. He's one of the greatest vocalists okay. of, in rock and roll. So, for like I said, we had a list of songs that we were talking about doing. You know, and that one just sprung out to us. And uh, like I said, once we started playing it, we were like, "Freaking cool, man! Let's let's do it." So. And 
how do you think you express the best yourself? I mean, in the melodies or when actually you go? Both. Okay, both. Because uh, I'm it's a, like two different worlds for you. How do you live it? No, because we're musicians first and foremost, you know. And it's really the song calls for something. You implement it. Uh, for me, I'm just as passionate about a huge chorus or a melody in the verse as I am screaming my head off in the, in the verses or vice versa in the chorus. Uh, it's really just the moment and where my headspace was when I wrote that. So I'm comfortable on both sides of it. And which are the coolest bands from you know the American modern rock scene that you consider actually maybe part of a scene with your band that you really like? It's Wow, there's a bunch of them. Avenged Sevenfold, you know, Definitely. Disturbed, Corn, okay. uh, Metallica. I mean, are you talking about modern or new bands? Yeah, like. I yeah. would say Kill Switch Engage. Okay. I would say um, oh God, Demon Hunter, Avery. Lamb of God. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The new crop of, you know. It's, it's funny because to us, we sometimes forget, you know, because uh, it, we're on that sort of zombie. There's another one, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Slipknot. For the new fans, maybe the viewers of this interview that they're from Europe or Italy actually and they maybe never heard about the band before, it's actually quite impossible, but if it happens, which three songs from your previous records and which three of this new one would you pick for them to listen and understand mm. immediately what this band is all about? I'd say the bleeding. Dying Breed, Under and Over It, and then from this one... Watch You Bleed. Watch You Bleed, definitely. Lift Me Up. And Dot Your Eyes. Yeah, Dot Your Eyes and Cross Your Teeth. That's a good one. Yeah. Definitely. I Am Sin. Uh, yeah, I'd tell them but the whole new album, man. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm, I'm so yeah. in love with it. I think it's our best work up yeah. to date. The, so. the new album is basically um, something that embodies the first three. Yeah. So I, I would say, like, if, if mm. somebody listens to this new album, any of the new two, basically, is the, the combination of what happened between the first, second, and the third record. It, I think this is the strongest effort we had so far, and, and it is really a combination of everything that we have done in, in the past. Yep. Okay, and two reasons why they should go out and buy the ticket for your Italian show on November immediately and without, you know. Because we're going to come and kick some serious ass. <laughs> That's one. And for two, it's going to be a great lineup. You got Device with David Draymond from Disturbed. You got us, and then you got Avenged Sevenfold. And I know all three of these bands, including we're our gonna own, it, yeah. we're going to bring it. So don't fucking miss it. I'll come for you. I'm just <laughs> okay, so thanks very much, guys. <laughs> Thank you.